viewers, God bless you wherever you are. Uh, let us go to our reading. Our reading is taken from uh, Acts 16 from verse 25 to 26. It says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a, a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chain came loose. Today God is going to talk to us about waiting on God. Waiting on God. One of the worst feelings in life is to wait. One of the worst feelings in life is to wait. Yes. is to wait especially when it comes to wait on God. You know what I am talking about. Yes, you know. You right now, your feeling is like you are waiting on God. You have prayed for something. And you are wondering, God, what is taking so long, God? Are you even listening? Have you forgotten me? Do you not even care? You might be praying for who knows what might be you are praying that God would do for you to heal you from your disease. Perhaps you are asking God to bring a loved one to Christ, you might be praying for your financial situation, praying that God will give you a job with really benefits to help you to provide for your family. You might ask God to heal you or your loved one or to save your marriage that is passing through many troubles and challenges or praying so that God can bring you a spouse. And yet, the more you pray, the less you see you are probably praying on something having faith for or something believing that you have not got it at the exact time you are expecting. Maybe you have got no sign that God is hearing you or sign that He, God, is active in your situation, 
or he cares about you. Some answers or any answer from God sometimes doesn't show us a sign so that we can see that God is doing something or feeling that God is with you in your situation. But let us go to the word of God that we read. Maybe you are feeling like if you have done something wrong and it was not according to what God wants you to do. And then you get into this situation and you are praying for God to intervene right now but it seems as like God is not on your side. Paul and Silas in Acts 16 verse 25 to 26 it said Paul and Sela were in prison. They have nothing to do. They were preaching the gospel. But unfortunately, they were got arrested and put in prison. And there, they have no any way. That is, they don't have lawyer, nobody to help them in their situation. They were thrown in the jail, and they were there. And they have nothing to do. The only thing they could do is only to praise God, thinking, worshiping, and waiting upon God for his divine intervention. And in verse 26, it said, Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. The word suddenly, that means God was there. God was with them. God was beaten. He was there. They were thrown to the prison. The God Almighty was there. But why didn't he Stop this all things to happen. God's way is not our way. God wants everything to glorify him. Even the pain, the sickness, the disease, marriage problem, poverty, rejection, disappointment, failure. People reject you, ignore you. God is with you. And you have been prayed, fasted, so that God can change your situation. It doesn't happen in the right time that you are waiting for. But the Bible says that in verse 26, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open. God will intervene suddenly. Now, in your situation, and all 
the doors that were being closed, God is going to open it. And we continue, it says, and everyone's chain came loose. Every chain the devil, the enemy must have. Chain you with it. I break it right now. I break it right now. It is going to loose. It is going to loose. I lose it. I lose it. I lose it. You are not listening to this teaching just by chance. It is God's time. You have been waited for long. And that is why you are now listening to this teaching. Because God is about to do something new in your situation. Yes, you. God is going to change your situation. Yes. And yet, for some of you, there is nothing at all what is God doing well. We are waiting. Yes. Why and how? Why does God fail so silent? You won't remind me. Why? That is because God, God's silence doesn't mean he is not present. He is there. His absence, the absence of God means God is working while you are waiting, while you are wandering behind the scenes. The goodness of God the power of God, the provision of God, the grace of God. He is always working. He is always working. He is working in all things to bring about good. He loves you. He is a good father. Yes. He has a plan for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to, pr to prosper you just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean he is not doing anything. What is God doing while you are waiting? Is he always works even while you are waiting. He works where in things well, you are waiting for a dream to come true. For vision to come to pass. Or problem to turn around. To make the right person when it is taking longer than you thought. It is easy to get discouraged, to become impatient, and think 
that God is not about to do something in your situation. But sometimes it is not happening because you are not prepared for what God has prepared for you. Yes. You are ready for what you have in your mind. But you are not ready for God, for what he has for you. Yes. Realize you couldn't handle it, the things that you are passing through or right now. You need more time to grow, to develop, to gain experience for the thing that you are praying for. Maybe you are not mature enough now. The scripture says, let patience have it is perfect work. Patience is developed in the wait room, in the waiting room, where you are waiting, in your war room, where you are praying. Patience is developed there. You might not see anything changing, but something is happening. Patience is working. Yes, your spiritual muscles are getting stronger. You are growing, developing. Patience is building you spiritually in wisdom, in another area, getting you prepared so you can sustain what God has in his plan for you. Don't discourage. Don't disconnect yourself from God. Yes. Don't give up. Waiting periods don't get discouraged because it is not happening as fast as you would like. Yes. The longer it takes, that means the more God has in store when it is your time. Yes. When he knows you are ready, what you give birth to is going to be much bigger than you have imagined. We don't live in a culture today where people are willing to be patient and wait on God. People don't want to wait. People want everything to be in rush, to be in the time that they, they want it. That is for the world. But for us, the believers, we have to wait on God for his time well he is working in his time frame god has a reason when he doesn't move as quickly as you 
want him to move. God doesn't move by your situation. God doesn't move by your prayers. God doesn't move, I say, by your prayers. Some people used to say, when you pray, God is moving. God doesn't move. God doesn't change. But your prayer moves your situation. Your prayer makes you to change. There is a reason why God doesn't move as rapidly as you want him to move. Because he doesn't move. That waiting on God is a good thing and is keeping that hope and keeping that expectation burning in your heart. And looking for God to work And staying bound and connected to God until his time comes. Don't give up. Words not backslide. Not sliding into your own way. Not taking matters into your own hands. Leave everything to God. Because that is what most people do when they are waiting and God doesn't move quickly enough. They take matters into their own hands. And that makes your situation even worse than it already was. Don't try to fix things on your own way. Waiting patiently means that you are going to have an attitude of hope and expectation that determined the intervention of God in your situation. When you start doing something in your own way, God will leave the situation in your hand and it is going to destroy you. Stay connected to the Lord and not going backslide, not going tired of waiting on God. Develop what you are doing right now. Where you are waiting on God, do something. Don't get frustrated. Don't just going to sit right there because you are expecting God to move. No. Wait on God. Praying. Praising. Thanking Him for your situation. All those things, God will put it together to change your situation. When Paul and Silas were in the prison. They didn't blame God. They didn't blame their situation. They didn't blame the prisoner. I, I mean uh, the guard of the prison. But the only thing they put all their situation in the hand of God. They were waiting on him patiently. Only praising and waiting for God's intervention. 
and you too have to do that. Don't get frustrated. Don't do anything against yourself. God is about to do something. In this quiet time, don't quit. Don't expect him to work at your own time. God's time is totally different than our time. When you go to the hospital to see a doctor, you tell the doctor about your situation. And then doctor is the one to give you medicine, to give you injection or pills according to the thing that he knows that can help you to get healed. You don't force the doctor to give you this medicine and not that. Or when you get to the hospital and there are some people there waiting in the line, you don't go right to the front to see the doctor, but you wait in the waiting room, might be in the clinic, might be in the emergency room. You wait there until the nurse call your name and after that they register you and then you have to wait and they take you for like uh, to take your blood pressure or uh, any other things or your breath then you go back and wait and then after that they will call you to to to, to the inside rooms and then you will sit there or lay there on the bed waiting for the doctor. It takes time, might be five hours, might be ten hours. But at the end, the doctor will come and see you and then will give you the medication that is necessary for your disease or sickness. You don't force the nurse or the doctor to rush up and do something for you because you are feeling bad. Your pain is increasing. Your situation is worsening. No, you wait patiently. And why don't you wait on God patiently? You have to develop the attitude of waiting patiently upon the Lord. Yes. Because many things that happened in your life, sometimes it is because you are the one taking advantage of it. You are the one who want to solve it on your own way. You pray, you fast, but when you come out from the prayer room, you start doing things totally different. And this is the thing that is making things worse. Why I am saying worse, the more you are taking advantage of your situation, trying to find solution for it in your own way, God will leave you to deal with those things by yourself and that situation will overcome you because God is not there with you. Yes, you have to change your attitude. You are not patient. You do things all in rush. You don't wait. That is why God is talking to you today about waiting on God. He is 
teaching you his character, his patience, waiting. No matter what situation wasn't, don't take anything by your own hand and doing it. Yes, because he knows the best for you. The only way you ever know what you really believe is to have it put to the hand of God. That's from God. And you don't feel like he's anywhere in the thing that you are struggling with. I know some of you are really frustrated, are about to give up. But I am here today to tell you that you are on God's list. It is just a matter of time or place. You are in the line. You are the next person to be called by God and to solve your problem. You are the next. You are waiting and you are waiting. That is when you find out you really trust God is the right thing. To believe him, to trust him, to wait on him with a good attitude as long as you are believing God. Yes. To believe in him that God is working and you have told him everything about your condition, about yourself. Even he knows before you open your mouth and pray for him, he already knows anything. Don't say you have done this, you have prayed, you ha have done everything, and now you have nothing, you are about to give up. No. God is saying to you, this is your season. This is your time. I am about to get into your situation and to solve it. Because you have been waiting for many months or many years, that does not mean that God has forgotten you. That God is ignoring you. Wait upon God patiently. God is working on your file, on your problem. He already has the solution for it. But it's only a matter of time and place. God's timing is the best. God's time is the best. I say again, God's time is the best. God is working and is helping you because he is your God. He knows everything. He's about to make a breakthrough in your life, in your marriage, in your finance, in your job, in your career, in your school. God is working on that second before you get it. He is working on it.
God is working right now. The second thing is only his time. It is only a matter of one, one step. He had heard your prayers. He is working in your situation. Specifically when you have prayed. Prayers for others. And praying for yourself. Can make a big impact. When you are praying for others and praying also for yourself, waiting on God, God will intervene and do things that you never expected it will happen in that way. Faith is for when you don't see anything. When it doesn't feel good, when you have questions that you are not getting answers. Exact opposite. Yes. I know it doesn't make any sense, but you have to believe God. Believe God working in your situation. Believe God. Trust Him. Don't think that it doesn't make any sense. But believe God. Believe Him. He is working. Something good is about to happen to you or to the people that you are praying for. Don't put time that God has to answer your prayer on it. God's time is the best. Wait on him. Everything in this life happens according to God's time. But this time, this time is taking long because God wants you to improve your attitude now. Start putting the things that is not necessary, that is frustrating you, put it aside. And put upset all aside, stress all aside. Complaining, put it aside. Anything that makes you feel bitter, put it out. Start a new chapter with God from today. Don't think a lot about your situation. Thinking about your situation doesn't change your situation, but it makes it worse. It brings high blood pressure, diabetes, stress, and many things. He has to wait. Even his father didn't recognize him. When prophet Samuel went to Jesse's house to anoint one of his sons to be a king, David was not included among the boys or the youths those are brought in the presence of God to be anointed. But he was left in the field, in the forest, looking after sheep. 
until the prophet asked him, asked Jesse, that is this all the, the sons that you have? Jesse said, there is only a youngest one, a small boy. He is there in the field looking after the sheep. Then the prophet of God said, go call him right now because we are not going to wait. Why? Because the waiting time has come that God was going to intervene, to anoint David. You might be ignored by people, by people that you have supported them, by people that you stand with, by people that they were nothing. They were nothing. They couldn't have anything. No clothes on their body. No, feed, no, no food to feed on. No bed to, to sleep on. No shelter. No house. Nothing. And you stand with them. And then they become whom they are now. Might be your wife. Might be your husband. When you meet, they were very poor. But, and because of you, they are rich now. And now they forget you. Now they, they, they ignore you. Don't frustrate. Might be your co-minister. You help them. You support them. And then they, they send you away. They cast you away. Don't frustrate. That happened to David. His own father couldn't call him. To be included in the time that the prophet was coming. Maybe your situation is the same. You are feeling bitter. Because you have helped many people. You have supported many people. But at the end is ignorance. They ignore you. They send you away. They don't like to see you. They don't call you. They don't visit you. Maybe you are sick now. You need their help. They don't care. You are poor now. You need their help. They don't care. God knows everything that you are passing through. And you have been waiting, praying, fasting. And it comes even the people that is around you, they are saying to you, you have been praying and fasting for this long period. We didn't see any change. There is nothing. We can't trust you or trust your God anymore. They don't want to listen to you. They don't want even to see you by their eyes. They ignored you. They cancel you from their list. They don't talk to you. They don't visit you. They don't call you. Don't frustrate. Don't stress. God is about to reward you. It happened to a great man. As I said, David was called by the prophet himself. Because God has... A blessing for him. Your blessing will not go for anybody. What God has ordained you for will not go for another person. The ministry God has called you for, no one will, I mean, will take your ministry and start doing it. The teaching God has ordained you for, it is not going to be for another person. The vision God has called you for and has given you and has ordained you and has anointed you for someone will take and uh, will, ha will try to take and do it in another way in a different way but they will not succeed believe me they will not succeed because your vision your blessing will not be taken by anybody David is anointing. His father was fighting to be given to his elder 
brothers or one of his elder brothers. But God didn't allow Jesse to change the anointing, to change the calling, because he knows that he is the God of David. He has created him and he has called him by name. And after when David was anointed to be a king, he waited for 13 good years to sit on his throne. 13 years a king was running in the forest, running in the desert, in the caves, among the mountains. A king has no shelter, has no food, has no home, has no clothes. David must have given up. But he says, one day God will reward me. In all this, he never get bitter, he never gives up, he never quit, he never stop praying, he never do, I mean stop doing the thing he knows that is to make him, to prepare him to be a king. He was there always in the presence of God. And for you too, God is talking to you. He is about to change your situation, to heal you, to make breakthrough in, in your marriage, to change everything. Might be your spouse, might be your kids, might be your finance, might be your health, might be you want to marry, might be you want to make business, might be you have a, a ministry and it seems like God is not there. You have a big vision. That is why all these things comes in your life. When you have a great vision, also your test is bigger. When you have a great vision, your waiting time is big. When you have a great vision, your challenge will be great. I mean bigger too. The more God wants to anoint you to be a prophet, powerful apostle, powerful preacher, powerful pastor, powerful man of God or woman of God, the more you will have tough situations in your life. But that doesn't mean that these things are there to kill you, to stop you, to hinder you. No. God knows all the things that you are passing through. But it is only for your benefit because in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 it says, for we know that all things work for the good of those God loves them, for those he has called them, and you are the one. God bless you. We are going to pray, and God is going to intervene in your situation, in your challenges. God is going to change anything in your life. The things that you used to see in your life, God is going to remove them in the name of Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, any stronghold that has been assigned to destroy you, to keep you 
from the thing that God has called you to eat. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. That sickness be removed. Anything devil might have command in your body. I remove them out. I remove them out. I remove them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Any closed doors be open right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any closed doors be open right now in the name of Jesus' name. That sickness, the spirit that is behind it, I arrest it, I cut their heads, I kill them by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered. Be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Breakthrough. 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 Breakthrough in your life, in your finance, in your marriage, in your health, in your school, in your job, in your career, in your business, in your ministry, in your family. Breakthrough. 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 I, pros I prophesy blessing upon your life. Any blessings that have been delayed since you are being born in this world. In the name of Jesus, I command them all to come upon your life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I command them from north, south, east, west to come upon you right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Those who are waiting for financial breakthrough, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Those who want a fruit of a fruit of womb, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That dry bone be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. That blind eyes. See now, look now, and begin to see in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those who have high blood pressure, drop down. Drop down. High blood pressure, drop down. Drop down. Drop down. In the name of Jesus Christ. I arrest any spirit of diabetes in your body. I kill them. I cast them out. I speak healing in Jesus' mighty name. I cover you, your wife, your husband, your kids, your belongings, your job, your ministry, and your city, and your country, your continent, your tribe, your claim, and everybody that is in your life. I cover them by the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Don't forget to like or share the video or write any comment that comes in your mind. And don't forget to follow our uh, page so that you can receive new anointing from God through our teachings. God bless you. Stay in peace until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen.